everyone, it's Nate and Ashley with the Outer Banks Wedding Association, and we're here with Fast Night's Lone Theater, Caroline and Victoria. Woo! Hey, guys. hey guys! So we are here at Fast Night's Lone Theater today, and we're just kind of walking around the property. So if you're not familiar, um, Lone Theater is an amazing caterer, but they also have a full like brick and mortar restaurant. Um, and so here at the restaurant, they also have these incredible gardens. We're kind of going to walk around, ask the ladies some questions about that. Um, so right now, Caroline, point us out where we are. So we are, here's the entrance to our restaurant, and this you will see our front garden, which has okra, different lettuce um, varieties. We've got basil, uh, sun gold tomatoes, all kinds of good stuff that we use here in all of your dishes when we cater your event. So that is super cool, and I think one of the things that makes y'all really unique is that, I mean, you're truly, like, farm the table best you can be like there's physically here at the restaurant same goes for like their seafood everything is local waters um so yeah that's a really unique part of we'll Bass Night Sims Cedar wouldn't you say yes absolutely we definitely pride ourselves 100 percent in trying to do as much farm to table um sea to table as possible we have a fish cleaning house out back so our fishermen bring the fish here on site we clean it ourselves and then serve it to you at your events. Cool. So, so cool. Yeah. Um, so tell us a little bit more about the restaurant and the Bass Night family and all that. So how long have y'all been in business and doing catering, restaurant, all that good yeah. stuff? Yeah. So we have been in business. This is our 25th year. Woo! Yeah. So long time. Um, it was started with my mom, grandma, my dad, my sister, and myself. And um, we have continued that on. We have been catering since day one. Um, it's definitely grown tremendously from 25 years ago. But um, this is definitely a bit different than the restaurant we started with. Um, we had a fire in 2007. Um, and then the new restaurant was built um, in 91 days. And we've been open ever since. That's insane. Uh, I remember yeah. the old restaurant. I remember the old restaurant. Yeah. I remember the, the building in the new one. Super yeah. cool. Yeah. So you've been in the biz for 25 years yep. and you've seen weddings on the Interbanks for that long. Yep. Anything you can think of that's like a huge difference? Like 25 years ago, what were weddings like? You know, like were menus different? Like were there any venues back then? Like what, what was the landscape? I think things have definitely changed tremendously. Um, definitely grown. I mean, this, we used to do maybe 30 events a year yeah. and now we're doing 200 events right. a year right. so I think this has become such a huge destination just because of the beauty of the Outer Banks the natural beauty um, right here at our location alone you know we've got the water views um, it's just a place that has definitely definitely grown tremendously in the 25 years yeah would you say were event homes a thing back then, or do you think event homes are more, obviously they're bigger and better now, right? Yeah. And we'll talk a little bit about some of the event homes and venues, but um, would you say that they were around 25 years ago, or is that more of a recent thing? That's definitely been a recent thing. Yeah. Um, 25 years ago, I can't remember, I mean, it was more the small venues. Yeah. Um, it was not the mega homes by any stretch. Yeah. Um, they would get, I guess there were some events that we would cater at smaller um, beach houses, but nothing like it is today. Yeah. So this is the Roanoke Sound, yes. right? And views from all over Lone Cedar. Okay. Okay. Lemongrass here too. Lemongrass. Entire hedge of rosemary. There's literally rosemary going all the way down. So when you're walking around here, all you smell is rosemary. It's incredible. Incredible. Okay, so we were talking about the size of weddings, and y'all have done things from like five people to a thousand people. Mm -hmm. um, but I wanted to show everybody like your on-site event space. So obviously you've got the huge restaurant upstairs. We'll mm -hmm. pop up there. Um, but you also have this amazing sound front location down here with the cool covered patio, the arch. So I just wanted you to kind of show everybody that and touch a little bit on what you can do out here, like physically on site for a smaller reception, rehearsal dinner, even wedding ceremony. Yeah, absolutely. So we do have this arbor here that we built. It's all from locally reclaimed driftwood. Super cool. Absolutely. It's so awesome. A couple years ago, Mr. Mark kind of had the idea and he kind of just sketched out his mind. And we built it ourselves and it was really nice and they've been putting all the hedges in and flowers and yeah. it's kind of flanked by the rosemary and sitting right on and the water. And this is actually um, from yesterday's wedding. Yeah. <laughs> from last Flower night. girls. <laughs> so I actually did a, a small wedding here yesterday. So flower girls out of the dream. 
landscaping and the greenery and it's just absolutely beautiful. So that's not usually there, but it's absolutely stunning just the way it like adds to the really cool driftwood art. Yeah, and we love it. People will come down from the restaurant when we're not having events and they'll be here just dining and you'll see them all standing in here and taking family photos yeah, it's and beautiful. enjoying walking through the garden. But it's such a beautiful space for small events. Now we can fit a pretty good amount of people under here undercover with no extra tables we can get about 80. yeah um i feel like wow. the magic number here is between like 20 and 50 um because it just gives you like a nice amount of room there's a beautiful breeze like if we had too bad we didn't do it we had lights strung up last night from metro it looked really gorgeous mm -hmm. um, it's just a really nice quiet environment you have the waterfront here a lot of times the osprey who's not here currently will be here visiting us a lot of times during the year so that's awesome yeah if y'all don't know uh they have ricky and lucy resident ospreys resident <laughs> ospreys um can you see their yeah yep her vest is right up there so they've left us for the year sometimes they squawk at you yes they do she gets she gets a little sassy sometimes when she's <laughs> with the babies but I mean, it's just a really fun place especially for those eco-friendly rides the farm to table rides there's a lot of cool features in here not to mention just the gravel that you're looking at. This isn't actual gravel. These are crushed clam and oyster shells that have been bleached. So this is all an eco-friendly way of instead of getting, you know, gravel to actually use something that we, you know, would reuse. You have lots of fresh herbs and the covered patio, like I said, will see about 80 in this yeah. when you squeeze it a little yeah. bit. It's a, it's a really nice place to have a small, intimate ceremony and reception. Yeah, so I mean, you're right here on the waterfront, on yes. the sound, which is gorgeous. You get a great sunset, mm -hmm. and then, like I said, it smells like rosemary everywhere you are, <laughs> and there's you're, like, surrounded by the gardens, and it's just super, super... Oh. <laughs> Sorry, I wasn't ready. I wasn't ready. All right. Um, so, Victoria, mm -hmm. let's talk a little bit about, like, your side on the catering things. So, how long have you been with Fast Nights? I'm going on, what, is this six or seven years? Yeah. Oh, six wow. years. Yes, yeah. six years. Um, so, talk to me a little bit about, like, the event homes um, versus venues. They're very different, but would you say that like, you run into more challenges with one versus the other? They both have their pros and cons, for sure. Event homes can be a little more challenging because you are working around the families that are all staying there things like that um, but it is also really nice because people can relax in the event home they know they're waking up there they don't have to worry about getting a car or traveling somewhere so that's really nice and it's also really helpful too when they're at an event home we do a lot of multiple caters throughout the week sometimes so sometimes we'll come in the morning of and we'll do like a ladies brunch for them and then we come back that night to do a dinner a lot of times we end up doing welcome parties we end up doing a reception um, so that is all a really cool benefit and also the venues down here if you can't afford the big mega rental homes that are just so big and huge, the venues down here are beautiful. There's so many gorgeous venues and, you know, they are waterfront. You, know, you get a lot of great amenities with those too yeah. and a lot of room. Would you say, like you mentioned kind of challenges, kind of just like working around people. What other challenges do you think you face? Like from a catering team perspective, like is it tough for y'all to go <laughs> into a kitchen and like, cook off site I mean, it can, or it you know can me, be. like what is that like for a caterer like most <laughs> I feel like brides and grooms you know they don't see what y'all are doing and so just talk to us a little bit about that what is it like you know rolling into an event home and uh, catering a <laughs> 150 person wedding well it can, it can be a little crazy yeah. sometimes literally physically just getting into the driveway because sometimes you know <laughs> yeah. there's cars parked <laughs> I always do send reminder emails to my brides a couple of days out and ask them to just double check all the equipment when they check in Make sure the ovens are working and the stove tops working because we do typically cook on site. Um, especially we cook a lot of seafood. You don't want to be cooking shrimp and bringing it over in a hot box or something like that. So we cook a lot of stuff actually at the rental home. Um, and we're a family, you know, family business. So on top of that, you're coming in, you got all the kids running around. Sometimes they're playing in the elevator. You're trying to figure out how to get the food up. And you know, it's just working around a family and we enjoy being there. We're like a family. So a lot of times it ends up being a ton of fun. Yeah. And, you know, it's, it's an awesome environment. Yeah. Uh, what trends are you most excited to see with upcoming weddings, or do you kind of like forecast um, might be up and coming for, for weddings? I see a lot of different trends with food. You know, you always get the girls that are reaching out about trendy things like taco bars and, oh Lord, I'm trying to think, anything out here, taco bars, like nacho bars, all the fun stuff you see, a lot of stations heavy hors d'oeuvres, and we can do all of that as well. Mm -hmm. um, we do a lot of fresh local seafood, and I kind of find that that is what stays in the forefront of a lot of people's minds when they're reaching out to us. You know, they're coming to the Outer Banks. They want to show their family who lives 
in Pennsylvania, in Ohio, they want to show them good local seafood. You know, I'll talk to brides and they're like, we never get really good local seafood here. You know, we want to wow them. So I love working with brides to come up with a menu that's going to wow their family. And at the same time, I can actually work with them and say, okay, if you think they're not going to, that might be too much for them. You know, let's switch it over. Let's let's do our shrimp and grits that everybody loves that mm -hmm. we've done for years and that kind of stuff. I'm really showcasing, you know, North Carolina food, Outer mm -hmm. Banks food, Absolutely. like what we have locally here. Yep. And we won't serve anything that's not local. And if a bride does ask me for something, I'll have a bride call me and say, I'd love to see salmon on the menu. I'm like, well, you know, we can't get salmon locally, but we can, you know, it's rockfish season. And this is going to be 10 times better. It's going to be something your family's never had. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Um, what advice do you have for a couple that is planning their wedding and looking to book your services or just in general planning their wedding on the Outer Banks um, from your years of experience? Any advice for them? <laughs> well, there's a lot of different things. I always say stay informed. Yeah. Ask a lot of questions. Don't be afraid to ask questions. I have a lot of brides. They'll apologize for wanting to talk to me on the phone and ask questions. And ne I always tell brides, I'm like, never apologize to me for wanting to talk about it. I'm happy to answer your questions. You know, I want to give them advice and make sure they pick the right person for them. Right. Um, so asking questions is a great thing to do. Yeah, you don't want to not ask questions till the day of the wedding. <laughs> yeah. Um, and then at that point, it's, you know, more like having to be reactive. Um, so, yeah, mm -hmm. absolutely. You yeah. should always ask questions and not be afraid to do that. And I know one of the things that y'all do specifically is you have, like, a really detailed checklist you mm -hmm. go through with your brides um, and brides and grooms to make sure that they aren't leaving mm -hmm. things out, right? So it's like, who's providing this table? Who's providing mm -hmm. napkins? Or do you have, you know, cocktail napkins? Like all those little things. Yep. Um, so we came up with that a couple, about a year or two after yeah. I came on and we started, the list went from like this big. Oh, you know, it's a big, big list. You know, it's this big. And it doesn't take, it takes maybe 10 minutes um, whenever I book someone and we're doing a full service event. I always tell them from day one, we're going to set up a three-week final phone call. And this is when you can get on the phone with me, and I go down to everything to where, did you <laughs> yeah. move houses? We know you went rented Mark Twain, Hemingway, the, all together. And, you know, sometimes they switch the house to do certain yeah. things in. So we go down every single tiny detail. And I do ask, you know, where's your cake coming from, for example? Because sometimes we'll get there and somebody will come up and say, hey, where's the cake? And, we're, and I'm, you know, my staff can say, oh. It looks like, you know, so-and-so is providing it. Let me give her a ring, see where she's at, see yep. if she's having trouble getting here. So it helps us answer questions, and then I also give that to the bride. So when she's packing to come down from wherever, whether it be Virginia or, you know, farther away, she can say, okay, I know I'm supposed to pick up X, Y, Z, yep. and she can help delegate that. And make sure nothing got yeah. left off. And like, sometimes, see, we yep. forgot, no one has yeah. ice. Exactly. <laughs> and sometimes kind of in that, that, that list, she, they'll go through and say, Oh my God, I've taken way too much on. And I was like, okay, well, let's look through a package and see what I can do for you so I can bring it and you don't have to worry about that. Yeah. Um, so, another question I had is about the other events that you do. And both of y'all definitely chime in on this, but I know that Lone Cedar is known for doing um, non wedding events as well mm -hmm. and kind yeah. of some other fun things. So, talk to me about like some of your favorite events that you've done that are non weddings that are just like maybe interesting that people might want to hear about. Gosh, we do we do a lot. Yeah, we um we have traveled all the way to the fair. Um, we we, yeah, yep, fair we do the state fair. Raleigh. We do the state fair. We do the um the North Carolina Seafood Festival. Mm -hmm. yes. We do probably the most fun that we've had <laughs> is we have um done the Farm Aid, which is Willie Nelson. Mm -hmm. and, yes. Yes. And so, so what what three years? Yeah, done that? three or four years. The, it was in we have been to um, Raleigh. Uh, gosh, we've been to Pennsylvania, so Pittsburgh. Mm -hmm. We've been to Raleigh, Connecticut, um, which is, a, and then Virginia. So yep, we've done it four times. Yep. And um, that's a lot of fun. That is super that's cool. That's a lot of fun. Then we do um, locally, we do festivals as well, but we also cater the Pirates Cove Billfish Tournament. Mm -hmm. So that's a thousand Our people a night. Festival. Mm -hmm. Super fun. Yep. Yep. So we can do events from your personal chefs mm -hmm. to a thousand people a night. Yeah, I think that's really cool about y'all yeah. is that it, you aren't just weddings, just right. here on the Outer Banks. Mm -hmm. It just kind of shows that, like, this crew knows their stuff. They can literally do yep. anything, <laughs> anywhere, make it happen. Yeah. And we it's can even do fun. rehearsal dinners here on site. We can do weddings on site. We can do a little bit of everything. Okay. Wow. 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 So this is Sierra Wahoo, some rugs.
okra and tomatoes from the garden. So how long does this usually cook for? Like this? This water is going to cook normally for about five minutes. Five minutes. And then the vegetables are just a real quick sauté. Yeah. 